Debbie will walk her, and you'll see that the lunge line is snapped on the bottom ring of the bit. We'll go ahead and walk, and when we change directions, let's assume that we've walked, trotted, and loped in this first direction to the left. She's going to take that snap and snap it on the right side of the bit, and then reverse the mare and walk, trot, and lope in the second direction. And after you work her a few minutes in the second direction, if you wish, you could um, go ahead and undo the lunge line and free lunge her in a round pen. This way she's mentally and physically prepared for a very nice ride. And she's in the habit of getting this kind of preparation. We don't use a whip much, if any. Um, sometimes it's a good idea to have it in hand if we need to just raise it quietly and slowly if she decides that she's going to turn around on her own of her own decision. But generally speaking, you can lunge her without a whip if you wish. And if you do use a whip, of course, we always use a whip very quietly. Debbie's going to go ahead and free lunge her here for just a minute, and then we'll get ready to ride. Unsnaps the deal. The mare's already used to listening to her, paying attention to her, and having the secondary aid advantage of having the lunge line on if we need to bump her gently like we did. So she'll trot her just a few minutes, you know, a little bit, and then lope her and make the whole work, you know, 15 minutes is usually what's necessary and, or what we like to do. If we've worked a horse, let's say we worked a horse uh, later on in the afternoon yesterday, and this is first thing in the morning, which it is, um, we might only need to work her for 10 minutes because her energy level is really good. Kick her up into a lope. We can raise our right hand, in this case our right hand, and spread our fingers if the mare comes off the rail a little bit and we want her to go back to the rail. Debbie just raises her hand and that drives the mare. And she can walk towards her a little bit too if she, if she needs additional communication and um, tells the mare that she wants her to stay on the rail. You can also lunge her free if you don't have a round pen. Round pen's always nice to work one in. Come back down to the trot and she'll finish at a trot and then a walk just kind of for a calming effect and have a horse that's nicely prepared to ride. She's just telling her to walk. Whoa, we're all set to ride. And that's your warm-up session. Here's Sweet Pea. Just after we got on her. It's Thursday, December 27th. Nice easy walk. As we ride any pleasure horse, we like to ride them on a very light contact. And the nice part about Sweet Pea is she's, she is very light. So we ride her on a loose rein with virtually no contact. She'll feel communication through the loop in the rein. Nice easy jog trot on a loose rein.
as we ride, we can kind of communicate with our horse, both with our relaxed body and if she picks up a little bit of speed, um, we can just back her on down to a slower trot by picking up a little bit of bridle and using a verbal command to easy. She responds very well to any verbal commands at all. She likes you to talk to her, so we remember that we just we just drop down into a walk right now, and Debbie will say walk and just hardly do anything physically. Just she basically walk from the verbal command walk, and uh, and we'll just go from the walk into a trot by just clucking and picking up a little bitty bit of bridle and fluttering her legs just a little bit, but just very quietly just cluck at her. The second she's trotting, we stop clucking. To loper, we kiss to loper. To bring her back from a, from a trot to a walk, we say the word walk. Debbie just kissed at her, loper off there. Down, back down to the walk. And back into the lope. And go from the lope to the trot. She just says trot. Gets a little contact with the bridle. And then as the mare assumes the trot, relax both with a loopier rein, a more looser rein, and a more relaxed body. She's going to go ahead and move into her lope. Kiss at her, pick up a little bit of contact on the bridle to communicate with her. And she'll stop her right here and just verbal command, whoa. Pick up a little bit of bridle. And just walk off quietly. Maybe we should go ahead and reverse now. Remind her, reminding her verbally to kind of keep her walk relaxed and nice just by saying walk. That kind of lets her know that she's not going to get asked to trot or lope at this point in time, so the walk remains kind of quiet and easy. Yeah, Sweet Pea uh, can be ridden with or without spurs. Um, She's nice and light-sided, so, um, you know, a very mild rowel or a ball spur is, is fine. And, like I said, she can be ridden without spurs as well. Very light-sided and just a little flutter of the legs. Also, when we go lope, of course, we, we kiss at her to lope. Kiss is the cue to lope, and that's pretty universal. And as we get ready to ask for that lope, we drop our outside leg a little further back and then relax everything. As we ride, we're riding with a soft body rhythm, absorbing the movement of the lope. We refer to how we ride and absorb that horse's motion as receiving and following. As the horse rises, we receive their upward movement and as they drop down in stride at the lope, we follow that down, kind of begin that following in advance in a very relaxed way. And that way we ride as if we were one with our horse.
Nice Western Pleasure jog trot again. And back to the walk. And after the cue for the walk, we relax again. Anytime you want to reassure her com communication verbally, to tell her easy and, and uh, or, or walk within the walk to slow down the walk, we can use a verbal command walk or easy or both. And once she's kind of in gear at her walk, she's going to pretty well stay there and be a nice horse to ride all day long. Here we're at the jog trot. And we're just stopping back up. She backs up very lightly with picking the bridle up and then lightly pulling and releasing the bridle within the rhythm of each backup step, along with a very soft both legs pushing back as well. In other words, we back up between our four corners of our square control, our two reins and our two legs, with probably 75% of the request to back being done from the bridle, 25 with our legs. And she can back without any legs at all or with a little bit of help from the legs. Yeah, as what Debbie's doing now is so that she's being told to not be distracted by things around her. She's closing her legs. Whenever the mirror raises her head a little bit, she just close her legs. And she's trained to put her head down, but when you just close her legs. She's lots of fun to ride. You guys enjoy her and have a happy new year. She's very easy to clip. She doesn't have any problem with having a mother clip. Over the years, for that matter. She's a pretty good girl. She must put the long hair underneath her eye and on top of her eye. Put her thumb over her eye to protect it just in case she moves quickly. And then, again, we'll we don't want to cut the eyelashes on the top of the eyelid, so we make sure that we hold that back with our left hand and put the long lashes underneath with the right hand. We go ahead and hold her here just gently to clip her bridle path. When we get towards her mane, we'll come backwards so that we don't cut any of her mane hair off. I take her here with my left hand and begin to just go ahead and clip it. On the right side, holding it with my left hand. You don't know how much you folks might like to turn her out, so you may want to grow a little hair in the ear during winter. We've left her mane long. Um, if you wanted to shorten it to a uh, shorter, shorter Western Pleasure look, you might be able to do that. Long mane's quite acceptable, and some people actually prefer it in Western Pleasure. 